Welcome everyone. So, so far we have been looking at stochastic control problems of two different kinds. The first in which the state was perfectly observed and then again the stochastic control problems where the state was not fully observed and uh, but we had uh, partial information about the state through some observations. What we have assumed in either case uh, is that we were looking at policies which were a function of the information and the information that we had at any time step was given by the history of observations that we had up until that time and the history of control actions that we have taken up until that time. Even when we were looking at problems where the uh, state was perfectly known, we had a notion there of history dependent policies where the information of the entire history was available to us uh, in order to decide the action. Fortunately in that sort of setting what happened was that we realized that Markov policies were optimal. We realized that the entire history does not need to be uh, retained it is sufficient to focus on only the uh, it is sufficient to just know the current state. And so as a result of that we uh, if, if you remember I made this statement that Markov optimal policies are actually the same as optimal Markov policies. So uh, in the case of partially observed problems the situation was somewhat different there we did we, we, we did have to keep track of the entire history. because previous observations and uh, and fresh observations need have no relation uh, no guaranteed relation in terms of the quality of information they provide us regarding the state of the problem. Uh, so, one had to basically keep track of all the observations and, not, uh, and the, it did not make sense to discard any part of the history. Of course, we achieved a, a significant simplification in terms of computation because we said that uh, instead of keeping instead of taking the state to be the entire history uh, or the entire information vector, we can take the state to be the belief state where the belief was a probability distribution on the state space given the information. And that 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 the, the, the belief state did not grow with time and uh, the belief state had a fixed uh, had a fixed uh, dimension and so it made our problem a, a lot easier. However, in spite of this, the the the, uh, the point uh, the the uh, the point is that in either problem we have continued to make one key assumption about the information that we have in in uh, in the in the partially observed case we have if I, we have made this we have made the following assumption if you recall we we always wrote out we always wrote i k to be comprising of all the control actions up until that time which is u0 to uk minus 1 and all the observations that we have up until that time right. This was our information. Now notice that this would automatically mean that ik minus 1 is a subset of ik. In other words all the information so this is all the this is the information available to us at time k minus 1 information. available at time k minus 1 and this is the information at time k information available at time k. Remember I am not talking of observations I am talking of information information available at time k available at time k right. And so, all the information available at time k minus 1 is also available is a subset of the information available at time k. So, all that was available to us at time k minus 1 is also available to us at time k right. So, as a result of this what we have effectively said is that information is continues to accumulate over time information is not being forgotten all right. We are not forgot forgetting anything that we knew in the past. So, information is not getting forgotten is not forgotten. So, all the information that we had in the past continues to be available to us in the future. Now, as a result of this uh, we, we, we remember we use this particular assumption 
in a in a very critical way and I showed that demonstration for you when we did uh, when we were looking at linear quadratic problems. In the linear quadratic problem this assumption was actually used when we when we transformed one expect an expectation uh, of one kind over over uh, into an expectation of the other. We, we remember we transformed an expectation inside which was over i with respect to i k conditional expectation with respect to i k and outside we had a conditional expectation with respect to i k minus 1 and we, we were because of this assumption we were able to eventually write it eventually as an expectation only over i k minus 1. So, this assumption has in fact been used it is not only that this assumption was made for convenience and it has been uh, has not really been uh, exploited it has actually been used in, in deriving the problem. This, this sort of assumption about, about the information is what is called the information structure of a problem. So, here let me write this this is an example of what is called the information structure. information structure. Now, what is information structure? Information structure is simply a description you can say is a description of who knows what. At each instant in time. Remember we are talking of information, so really we must talk of knowledge in some sense right. So, when we say that i k is known to uh, when we are taking the action at time k we are effectively saying that uh, uh, that is our knowledge at time k. Now, you can think of the agent uh, the decision maker or the controller or the agent that makes uh, that is taking these actions as as some kind of a algorithm or a device or an organism like a human being or or a company or a firm uh, or like a like a like a shop that, shell, that is selling shoes or something any of this is 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 is, is all right as a model for for the decision maker right or i'll write as a, as a, as a as a sort of mental framework for for the decision maker so effectively you you can visualize the decision maker as any such entity and effectively what this this assumption ik minus 1 subset of ik is saying about that decision maker is that that decision maker has ha, knows everything at time k uh, uh, everything that he knew at time k min, at time k minus 1 is known to him at any other future time in time k and in particular any future times k plus 1 k plus 2 etc so in uh, so this this here is a particular case of of an information structure there is no uh, the, this is not the only kind of information structure in the world you would you I, what i will argue now is that there are in fact many many other information structures also that arise and in fact those arise far more commonly than this particular information structure. In fact, if you think deeply about what this information structure actually means, you will realize that there is something uh, the, we are actually making a fairly, fairly strong assumption here about what are uh, about the nature of information that we have. So, let us let us so we will uh, what that is what we will do now let us let us we will think about what is it that this information structure actually represents right. So, this information structure is basically representing that all that we all the information that we had received at uh, at a previous time instant continues to be with us at 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 time at, at, at the present time instant ok. So, previous time instant is k minus 1 present time instance is suppose k. So, all the information that was received by us at time k minus 1 uh, and at previous and at previous time since time immemorially essentially is available to us at time k. So, effect what this means how is this information going to be available to us? Well, for this information to be available to us this information has to be stored in some sense right somewhere it has to be stored. So, since when so for example, when we when we remember what happened to us in our childhood we are effectively saying that there is some information about that which has been stored in our brains 
right or if the control or if your computer uh, uh, look if you open your computer and open a, say a document that you had saved the previous day that information is there in the computer you are able to open it because the computer saved that document on its hard disk at the, uh, the, uh, the previous day right. So, this so any when you are talking of information being available across time implicit in all of this is a means of storage that somewhere we are storing information right. So, uh, this information here is therefore being stored at, at uh, for us so that it can be used at a future time at a future time k. Now, we can ask what happens as k increases as time increases the information that is being stored will continue to accumulate you keep having getting longer and longer information vectors like this you get you you your information the information that you are storing will become uh, will become more and more and eventually you will come to a stage where the amount of information you are storing is much more the is more than the capacity that you have for storing information because after all the world is finite but you can talk of it uh, of uh, of time instance that will continue to accumulate more and more information right so this here is therefore assuming that you have technically some kind of unlimited storage space right it's assuming one in in some sense an unlimited storage space so the so this this information structure which is ik minus 1 subset of ik is assuming assumes you can say unlimited storage storage So, this is this is one way of, of thinking of uh, of what is uh, what is going on in this. So, as a result once you have finite storage right once you have a limitation on how much can be stored and uh, how, uh, in your in, uh, in in your device let us say you are running a very uh, parsimonious uh, operation uh, you do not have much storage space in that case this assumption would be violated there will be some information from the past which will be lost in the future right. So, this this is something to bear in mind. So, this assumption will get uh, is is valid only when you really theoretically have unlimited storage ok. Another way in which this assumption can be thought of is is the following and this is another way of thinking about the problem and uh, which is something that is not uh, I have not yet touched upon in this course. So, one we have always been thinking of k as instance in time our our thinking was that k uh, is our times or decision epochs when decisions are to be taken and it is the same entity that is taking those decisions. So, it is a, a, a single controller or a single shop manager or a single uh, interviewer who is inter interviewing secretaries whoever, but it is one entity that is taking these decisions in time. But one can also think of another setting which is completely equivalent to this which is that there are not one entity, but multiple entities. In fact, there is a different entity at each time instant. So, one can think that there is a controller 1 at time 1, controller 2 at time 2, controller 3 at time 3 and so on. So, there are actually as many controllers as there are time instants and these are as physical entities different controllers right. So, if these are in fact different controllers the 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 information that is available to them is all local to those controllers. So, information i k is available with the controller at time k and that is that controller at time k is not the same as the controller at time k plus 1. So, the information available at time k is is present locally with controller time at time k at the with controller k and this information has to then be somehow transferred or somehow communicated or transported to controller k plus 1. Because these are physically two different controllers it means that they are they need to be information has to be sent from controller k to controller k plus 1. 
So, if I take this second view and which is also a, a valid view that there are actually not one but multiple controllers then this, this information structure that, that i k plus i k minus 1 is subset of i k is effectively assuming that the information of con that is available with controller uh, k minus 1 is being uh, uh, transported or communicated or transferred over space to the to another controller which is the controller at uh, the con which is controller k. So, if you are talking of so what does this mean? This means that as in if you think of these as these controllers as different controllers that means physically different entities then this assumption this information structure is essentially assuming that all that is known to one entity is known to the entity that acts ne next and therefore has to be for that to be true you need for that to be true it has to be communicated to the entity that acts next right. So, def now communication right communication from one place to another is will always in uh, will always have a some amount of noise. So, there is always a possibility that no, there is always a possibility that whatever information is available at time uh, with one controller is is uh, gets to the other controller in a somewhat correct corrupted form. One can aim to co correct these the for these uh, for these uh, corruptions and I will ex I will come to that issue in a moment. But remember that in even those issue those uh, corrections are not perfect and in general there will be some amount of noise when it when the information reaches from controller at time k to the controller at time k plus 1 right. So, when information so if we take the if the if we take the view that these are actually separate controllers then there is an issue of of information being communicated. And once it is once that if you is once the information is communicated and it is get it will get corrupted with noise then the information that is received at the at the second controllers end is not the same as that which was sent. What the, the, the controller will receive is what was sent plus whatever noise was has gotten added in the process. So, as a result this assumption here that i k minus 1 is a subset of i k is going to break down. Because what is what was known at the previous time instant is not anymore available at the next time instant. So, if these are actually separate contro controllers we are we are basically assuming that this is a perfectly noiseless means of communication right. So, mathematically there are two uh, the, these are all uh, the two models whether you have one controller acting multiple times or multiple controllers acting at each time uh, at separate time instance mathematically these two views are actually equivalent. But the physical assumption behind them behind this behind this information structure has to be understood. The physical assumption in one case is that you have unlimited storage right. So, if you have one controller So, I have two particular uh, two views or two ways of of viewing uh, stochastic control problems. one controller acting multiple times multiple controllers acting controllers acting at separate acting at separate time instants
right. So, one controller acting multiple times uh, this this particular issue we, we saw what uh, this we saw what uh, the 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 information structure the assumption of i k subset of i k plus 1 what that uh, information structure meant. So, the information structure would then in in here the information structure the information structure i k minus 1 subset of i k implies infinite storage. or infinite memory. Whereas, in this case information this the information structure implies perfect communication. Right. So, this is implicit therefore, in our problem. So, uh, what we need to uh, what has happened as a result of this is that although we mathematically just wrote out a one particular problem and we made a certain assumption about the information structure, it turns out we have not really thought very carefully about how this how this problem actually is physically getting implemented. If this problem involves a single controller, then we have to really think of that well our assumption implies that that single controller has infinite memory. If this problem involves multiple controllers acting at separate time instants, then our assumption is involves uh, is a tantamount to assuming that we have perfect communication, right. In either case, you are seeing here a hint that communication either in the form of storage and retrieval or in the form which is communication in space or there is a com or communication across time, which means from one time instant to the next time instant, right this this uh, this communication this either of these two forms of communication is implicit in the underlying physical uh, manifestation of this particular problem. So, this is something that we we have completely overlooked so far as in our development and this is something that we now have to start grappling with as as we uh, as we try to uh, as we try to think more deeply about information structures. So, here this the, this information structure here is has a name it is what is called the classical information structure. So, it has the the assumption. So, the classical information structure is basically saying that i k is a subset of i i k minus 1 is a subset of i k for all times k. So, the, so we have so far basically looked at stochastic control problems with classical information structure ok. So, we have so far studied stochastic control with classical information structure. Right. So, this is what we have uh, we have been uh, we have been studying. All right. So, now let us the question then arises are there non classical information structures and are there interesting stochastic control problems which involve non classical information structure. Well, the you, the answer is actually evident right here itself. So, any information structure which the which is not classical is called non classical. Any information structure not classical 
is called non classical I write this with a different color it is called non classical So, the question then arises are there interesting stochastic co control problems with non classical information structures. Now, the answer to that is actually there right here on the screen. See remember we have realized that cla the classical information structure means the information structure where i k is a subset of i uh, i k plus 1 this this assumed either of these two cases it assumed either infinite storage or it assumed perfect communication right. So, if in your any of these two are violated then the information structure is not classical anymore. So, for instance if you did not if you had finite storage then you are compelled you are obligated to lose some amount of information and that that then makes it a non classical information structure. If you have imperfect communication between entities then then what is sent is not what is received that then becomes uh, becomes a non classical information structure right. So, let us ask now is there any is there anything apart from an academic interest in in uh, in uh, problems stochastic control problems with non classical information structure. So, what I will argue in the next lecture is that there are in fact there is uh, a lot of a lot of practical interest in in such problems. In fact, there are many many interesting problem classes that have not been looked at or not been studied as stochastic control problems, uh, but actually are stochastic control problems with non classical information structure. So, this is now coming up as in the next lecture and in the rest of this course.